Today is one of the gray areas of the Christian year, a day when the lights are dimmed and the sky feels overcast, even if it isn't. A day when theologians and poets feel as if a heavy veil is drawn over heart and mind. An inexplicably sad day. We resist the gray areas, prefer to see everything in black and white, look for cloudless, sunny skies, try not to read between the lines, throw in a bright color or two to try and enliven the scene. In the gray light of early morning, after a night in the ecclesiastical high court and denial by one of his own circle, Jesus found himself at the gates of the reluctant Pilate, who promptly tried to hand him back to the Jews. And though the sun rose that morning, the whole world turned gray for one who found himself without friend or helper, faced with drinking a cup he'd prayed would be turned away from him, knowing that life was about to be drained out of him. We are invited to accompany Jesus on this gray day to be witnesses to his suffering, to keep silence before his cry of dereliction. In our imaginations, let us trudge toward Jerusalem until we come to the place of the cross. And then let us not turn our faces away. In this gray day, lie all the sorrows and failings of a humanity that strives for high success, yet comes up against human limitations and falls to the ground in despair. A humanity whose peace plans give way to guns and whose political promises become papers in filing cabinets. Here is a day marked by the brokenness of the world, but it is not a day to wallow in misery or to indulge in morbid thoughts about the crucifixion. It is simply a somber, dignified day when we remember how it was for Jesus and find at the foot of the cross a place to lay down ours and the world's sorrow. On gray days, it is hard to see clearly, difficult to understand things that aren't clear Yet all we are asked to do today is to be present to the sacred story as it is retold and to the inexplicable, mysterious, wondrous transaction that was and still is taking place.
The scripture is from Luke, chapter 23, verses 44 to 49. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowd who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. As we think about gray areas, I have to think about the cross. After centuries, the cross has been rebranded as a symbol of hope, so much so that we often forget of its grotesque origin. You see, the cross was originally a tool of torture, used to keep conquered lands under the thumb of the massive Roman Empire. This tool was used to protect order and maintain the status quo. In the church today, we often talk about the need to preserve order and a particular way of doing things. And I can't help but think that we might be falling on the wrong side of the cross. Christ himself was crucified for challenging wealth, power, and established religion. He was a nonviolent radical who developed a following based on love and not on hate. As we sit in the grave with our crucified Christ, I challenge us all to examine the ways that we are like Christ and like those who crucified him. It is my fervent prayer that we might put aside all within us that doesn't emulate our Savior. Let us be sent forth. Jesus, we wait here by your tomb, carrying our grief the grief of the betrayer, the grief of the denier, the grief of the crucifiers. We carry the grief of the lost, the heartbroken, and the bereft. Upon you was laid the grief of us all. It is finished. God of endings, God of darkness, God of the tomb, God of dark days and great loss, be with us now as we wait with Jesus. Amen.